Hello everyone, glad to see you. Welcome to another magnificent and marvelous math lesson. My name is Miss Antonia Bain and I'm going to take you through today's math lesson. So let's dive in. In today's math lesson, we have a thought-provoking and exciting topic to discover. I'll give you a hint. What is the opposite of multiplication? Hmm. Well, if you said division, you guessed it. We'll be discussing the operation of division. But more specifically, how do we divide those large numbers? Let's look at our lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify and define the three basic parts of a division equation, state the steps of solving a division equation, and solve a division equation with up to two-digit divisors and four-digit dividends. Are you ready? Let's get started. wondered what is division? Division can be defined as the opposite or inverse of multiplication. It asks us the question, hmm, if I share a number equally into groups, how much will there be in each group? Or, hmm, how many groups of a number are there in another number. Division can also be classified as the splitting into equal groups or parts. For example, you have 24 pieces of candy. You want to divide those 24 pieces of candy into four equal groups. One, two, three, four. Once sorted, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of candy in each group. There should be six pieces of candy in each group. When we see a division problem, there are two basic symbols that are commonly used. Wonder what these symbols are? Let's take a look at example 1 or example 2. The symbols that represent division would be the division sign in example number 1 and this division sign in example number 2. Both symbols signify division. In a division problem, there are three basic parts. They are the dividend, the divisor, and the quotient. Let's take a look at their definitions. The dividend. That is the number that you are dividing into. The divisor. That is the number that you are dividing by. The quotient. That is the result obtained. In this example, you see the division parts identified after the equation has already been solved. This example shows that 4 can divide evenly into 24, resulting with 6 in each group. 24 is our dividend, the number we are dividing into. 4 is our divisor, the number we are dividing by. And 6 is our quotient, the result obtained. Let's look at this example, example 2. Once again, we see the division parts identified after the equation has already been solved. However, in this example, 2 cannot divide evenly into 11, resulting with 5 groups of 2 and a remainder of 1. The remainder is what is left over when a number cannot be divided equally.
Now that you know that, can you identify the parts of a division problem? Look at this equation. 2000 divided by 20 is equal to 100. What is the divisor? If you said 20, you are correct. 20 is our divisor. It is the number we are dividing by. Can you identify the parts of this division problem? Look at the equation. 765 divided by 5 is equal to 153. What is the quotient? I'll give you a minute to think. If you said 153, you are correct. 153 is our quotient. It is the result obtained. Beautiful job, guys. Now, what are the steps of solving a division problem? There are five basic steps to solving a division problem. They are divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and repeat. Here are three phrases that you can use to help you remember the steps of division. Let's look at phrase number one. Does McDonald's sell burgers raw? Phrase number two. Daddy, mommy, sister, brother, rover. Or phrase number three. Do monkeys swing big ropes? Each word represents the steps of division. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and repeat. Let's begin dividing. We'll start off with an easy division problem. Let's take a look. We have 652 and we want to divide that by 2. Remember the steps of division as we go. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down, and repeat. Let's solve. To begin, we divide 2 into 6. How many groups of 2's are there in 6? If we're counting in 2's, that would be 2, 4, 6. So that's 1, 2, 3 groups. Put my 3 in the working part. Now I multiply. 2 times 3 will give me 6. My next step says that I subtract. 6 take away 6 leaves me with 0. And then I bring down and so my new number is now 5. After this, I must repeat. So I start all my steps all over again. 2 into 5. And I can look over here to help me, seeing that I already listed some of the multiples of 2. I know that 4 is the closest number without going over the number five. So that means that that was one, two groups of twos in five. I put two in my working part, then I multiply. Two times two would give me four. Now I subtract. Four from five leaves me with one. I bring down my two and my new number is 12. Now I ask myself, how many groups of twos can I get out of 12? Again, I look at the multiples that I've listed already. I stopped at six, so I need to list some more multiples until I get as close to 12 as possible. Let's list some more multiples. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I can stop right there. 
How many groups of twos was that? That was one, two, three, four, five, six. Six groups of twos. I put that in my working part. And now I multiply. Two times six gives me 12. And when I subtract, I'm left with nothing. So two can evenly divide into 652. Let's see if we were correct. Awesome. Your answer should be 326. Let's continue dividing, guys. We are going to try a more difficult division problem now. Let's take a look. We have 8,948 and we want to divide that by 10. Remember the steps of division as we go. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down and repeat. Let's solve. To begin, I look at my divisor and I list the multiples. I begin by listing at least five to 10 multiples of the given divisor. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. This is going to help me when I begin dividing. It makes it easier and faster for me to divide. I look now at my problem and I ask myself, hmm, so, how many groups of 10 can I get out of eight? Myself will tell me that there are no groups of 10 in 8. And so I multiply now 10 by 0, and we know that any number multiplied by 0 is always 0. That is the zero property. I subtract, and I'm now left with 8. My next step says to bring down. Now, my number is 89. I repeat all of my steps all over again. How many groups of 10 can I get now out of 89? I go to where I listed my multiples and I look for the closest number to 89 without going over. That number would be the number 80. So how many groups of 10 and 89? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I put my eight in the working part and now I multiply. 10 times eight gives me 80. I can subtract and when I subtract, zero from nine leaves me with nine, eight from eight leaves me with zero. My next step tells me that I bring down my four, and my new number is now 94. I repeat all of the steps all over again. How many groups of 10 can I now get out of 94? I go back to my list, and I look for the closest number. Here, the closest number is 90. Now, I count. There are nine groups of 10 in 94. Nine times 10 is 90. I now subtract zero from four, leaves me with four. Nine from nine, leaves me with zero. Now I bring down. My new number is now 48. How many groups of 10 can I now get out of 48? I go back to my list of multiples. And I look for the closest number to 48 without going over. That number is the number 40. How many groups of 10 in 40? 
One, two, three, four. I place the four in my working part. Ten times four gives me forty. Now I subtract. Zero from eight leaves me with eight. Four from four leaves me with zero. I have no more numbers to bring down and so therefore eight is my remainder. Let's see if we were correct. If you said 894 with a remainder of 8, you are correct. Good job, guys. Now it's your turn, guys. Pause the video and practice this one on your own. When you are done, press play and I'll reveal the answer. If you are done dividing, you should have gotten 278 with a remainder of 6. If you got that, you did a fabulous job. Let's continue. Let's recap now. What did we learn today? Today, we learned that division is the opposite or inverse of multiplication. We learned that there are three basic parts to a division problem the dividend, divisor, and quotient. We also learned that there are five basic steps to solving a division problem. Multiply, divide, subtract, bring down, and repeat. Well, that's the end of another marvelous and magnificent math lesson. You should be dividing masters by now. Go for and goodbye. Thank you for watching. This lesson was created by Miss Antonia Carmen Bain from TG Glover Professional Development and Research School.